Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so this week we are still celebrating Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, so I decided to make a sort of fantasy painting of some beautiful paper lanterns and a pagoda with a lovely and simple sunset type background. So I have my three standard brushes for this painting as per usual. I have my one inch square wash brush, a medium sized pointed brush, and a small detail brush. I also have my trusty old toothbrush that I'm going to use for some splatter painting action, getting those in my water cup off the screen. The colors that I have for the background step today, I'm going to be using a tiny bit of orange, a little bit of some nice bright red. I have here purple, blue, black, and a little bit of white. We're going to start with the background step here from the top down using our large brush. And let's go ahead and start with a little bit of a dark navy blue. Oh, and if you need to see a full list of all the materials that I use, go ahead and check the description box below. It'll take you to my website and there'll be a page there with everything that I use and recommend. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of blue and we're gonna mix it with just a pinch of black, just a little bit, don't wanna go too dark here. Just a beautiful night sky color and a little bit of water always into the acrylic paint helps it go nice and smooth and we're just going to take that beautiful navy blue and do a straight line straight ish back and forth here along the top part of our canvas making sure that the paint is filling in the little textured to canvas ripples getting all soaked in there. Not too much water though, because you want a nice dark blue. Okay, a little bit more blue, a little bit more black. Just building up the opacity a little bit. There we go. That's about the color that I was going for. Like so. Okay, we're just pulling that down a little bit further, not being too neat back and forth brush strokes. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush a little bit. If there's a little bit of blue on it, that's okay, because we're gonna be blending into purple now. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of purple and kinda sneak it into my blue a tiny bit and make almost a sort of in-between bluish purple color. And I'm gonna take that right underneath my blue, go across my canvas, and then also up into the navy blue. Again, letting it soak into the canvas texture. Don't want any white canvas showing, and then you actually wanna come up into the blue, don't be shy, and blend back and forth here, like so. Okay, and then we're just gonna work our way to pure purple, just as it is, nice big strip right in the center here of our canvas. You can add a tiny bit of white if you'd like as well. Your purple may be pretty dark, or if you're mixing purple from primaries, I usually like to add a little bit of white then as well. I'm doing a shortcut today of just using some store-bought purple. Easy peasy. Not too much thinking involved in this painting today, keeping it Simple on a Saturday. Okay, back and forth here so that you have consistent brush strokes that go all the way off the edge that blend up into the color before. This is important. This is, you know, like a big part of the painting is the sunset, the gradation. Okay, that looks very nice to me. Rinsing my brush again. Now we're gonna do the same kind of thing, moving our way to red. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and sneak it into the purple here. And just go right underneath that purple with a beautiful, vibrant magenta. A little bit of 
bit of purple in there just to help us blend those two colors together. And now this is not an exact science. Okay, we're just playing with these beautiful, cool colors that move into warm colors here. But you could have lighter colors. You could really make your sunset your own if you'd like. So that's looking really pretty. And now I'm gonna go just to full red. Look at how pretty and vibrant that background is looking. I'm gonna go almost all the way down to the bottom with that red, getting that background nice and filled in. Moving my brush quickly. Acrylic paint, you gotta work pretty quick with it because it dries pretty quick. Okay, so back and forth, back and forth, building up that dexterity. That looks good. Now a little bit of orange into my red for red-orange just at the bottom. Very bright and vibrant. So pretty. And just blending that into the red as well. I don't want to go up too high with the orange because later my gorgeous lanterns are going to be orange. So I want to have some nice contrast. So I'm just going to have the orange just be this beautiful fiery sunset color here at the bottom of the canvas. I don't want to have too much. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more red if I can find any <laughs> right through that as well. There we go. And just darken it a tiny bit. Beautiful. And then you can leave your gradation alone like this if you'd like, or you can add a little bit of white streakiness if you want for some clouds. So I actually have my medium sized brush for this and I'm gonna take like a watered down white. Just if you want, you can kind of break up your little composition here if you want with a few horizontal stripes of just really soft watered down white. Only if you want, you can leave it alone too. That is fine. But I just thought it would look really pretty if it was like a clear night and there was sort of some low clouds in the sky. Optional step. Okay, you don't want it to look too stripy, so a little bit random kind of here and there. Like so. Okay, really subtle. And then let's go ahead and grab our toothbrush. Ooh, actually, first, take that same brush, but you're gonna wanna rinse it. And then we're gonna make a little bit more watered down white. Pretty thick consistency though, still. So still a fair amount of paint, but you want enough water mixed into the paint so that it splatters nicely. So we're gonna do some splatter action now. So we're gonna take our toothbrush, dry it off a little bit, and I'm just going to dip it into that paint, water down white mixture, and I'm just gonna splatter just at the top, just here in the night sky, not so much all the way down, only maybe about that top third or so. Very pretty, like that. Very nice. Okay, gorgeous. All right, and then with my medium sized pointed brush too, I am gonna use the back and create just a few like bigger stars here and there in that composition as well. Beautiful night sky, gorgeous sunset. Let's go ahead and let this step dry and we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background here and fresh colors. All I need for the second half of the painting today is black and white and beautiful bright yellow and a little bit of orange. I washed my brushes at break and I got some fresh water as well. We're going to jump back in now with our pagoda, which is gonna be so fun. We're going to use our small detail brush uh, to 
kind of create the main shape for ourselves first. A little bit of black here on that detail brush. We're going to have our pagoda here on the right side of our composition. And I'm going to start with the sort of roof line uh, of the top part of my pagoda here. Or kind of, I guess kind of middle roof part here. I'm going to come up a few inches from the bottom and I'm just going to do a horizontal line to get myself started. Kind of straighten it out as I go. You do want this to try to be a horizontal perpen or a parallel to the bottom part of the canvas. Okay, so as straight as, straight as you can. Okay, and few inches long here and then a little bit of a flare up. It's going to start us off here with our pagoda shape. Okay, little flare and then a kind of triangle shape. Almost looks like a boat. Like so. And then I'm going to do another horizontal line at the top right here and sort of connect that top line here to the bottom curve, okay? So that is the first sort of pagoda shape. And we're gonna kind of adjust this as we fill in as well, so don't stress out too much. <laughs> uh, that looks pretty good to start. We're gonna have another little flare out right in between the top part and our first little flare out. So that's going to be our shape right there. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much, so I'm actually going to fill that in now. Kind of go one little step at a time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take now that medium size brush and just fill in that shape. Nothing too tricky. That way we can kind of see the shape as it's being built rather than trying to sketch the whole thing out and then fill it in. It's very important to sort of understand your painting. So you don't want to, you know, do too many sketch lines and then be like, what part is this? Is this the part that needs to get filled in? Do you know what I mean? So kind of going into our own little worlds here got to make sure that it makes sense. Okay, so we have our little roof. And now you can do this with your medium sized brush or with your small brush. But we're going to do the little column pillars that are the supports of the main structure. So I'm going to do that with a straight up and down line on one side like so. So again, if you'd like a little bit more control, you can use a smaller brush, but the width of the shape is about the width of this brush so that works well for me a little bit of brush control <laughs> and then here on the other side here kind of evenly spacing them like so and then another line straight up and down right next door same idea, nice and solid all the way off the bottom of the canvas, like so. And then we're going to do another one over here, balancing it on either side. And then in the center, I'm going to do two more. Okay, so I'm going to kind of eyeball that. Nothing too exact here, like so. And there we have our beautiful sort of outdoor type space within our gorgeous pagoda. Pagodas are found all over Asia, China, Japan, Cambodia, Thailand, so many places that I wish I could go. But today, we're just gonna pretend we're there. <laughs> Okay, that looks great. Nice little bottom structure of our pagoda. Very nice. Now for the top part, I'm going to grab my tiny brush again and do a little bit more 
building. Okay, so from the top little platform that I have right here, I'm going to do this secondary rectangle. Okay, a little shape like so, which is going to also have the similar type of roof where we're going to start with a straight line. And again, you want this to be smaller than the bottom part because we're kind of stacking it up like a gorgeous cake. And then a little flare up here on the sides in the same way. And this is going to come to a beautiful point up on the top here. So a gently sloping triangular shape like so. And that's going to be the top part of our pagoda. And in the same way that this had this little extra flourish, we're going to do a little extra flourish right here too. And then again, because I don't want us to confuse ourselves, that one was a little bit too big, but I will adjust over here like so. And I'm going to grab my medium sized brush again and just get that filled in. This is a little bit easier because this whole shape is filled in. So you don't have any open spaces in this top part of the pagoda. Just a lovely little space inside to meditate. <laughs> so gorgeous. Okay, gentle sloping here, like so, almost like a treetop. How pretty is that? Okay, like so. And not quite as much control with medium sized brush. So I think I'm gonna take this small brush again and just kind of refine the shape a little bit. Okay, a little bit of black. Just refining it as nicely as we can now with that tiny little detail brush. So cute. Okay, like so. I'm trying to balance the two sides. And bring that out to a nice point. Okay. Just finessing it, as I like to say. Okay. And then at the top part here, a little oval at the top, like so. Super cute, adorable. Okay, let's go ahead and leave that alone for a bit. We're gonna add a little bit of trees here at the bottom with our medium sized brush. And we're just gonna kind of scribble our way here at the bottom now, as if there was some beautiful gardens at the bottom of our pagoda. Okay, a little bit on either side. Some treetops, we're kind of looking up in the sky in this perspective, or maybe there a hedge line or something like that. It's a little bit of interest. And we still see our beautiful orange sunset sneaking from behind here. So pretty. Very nice. Really scribbly here. We'll give you some nice random texture all the way across like so. Oh, so cute. Loving it. Okay. And now I'm going to grab my tiny brush again. I'm going to do a little moon. So cute. Just with white. I'm going to do just a tiny little sliver of a moon up in the top part here. Just the tiniest little fingernail type moon. A crescent. You can really do any kind of moon that you'd like. I'm going to start with one sort of half circle and then just fatten it up ever so slightly until you have a nice dainty crescent. 
like so. That's where that teeny tiny brush comes in handy. A little bit fatter in the middle here. Okay. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of gray back on our pagoda. So just mixing a little bit of black into my white for a nice highlight. We're just gonna do a little bit of kind of definition in our pagoda shapes. So each of those little areas that we created, just gonna create a little highlight on. I just think that looks a lot more bold than just the black itself. You don't have to do this though. Just keep that in mind. You get to make your own custom painting every time. A little bit of highlights in each area. So pretty. Okay, that looks about right. You want one right here. Kind of straightening that out, a little bit of finessing. <laughs> okay, adorable. And now just the lanterns. It's our last step here. So I'm gonna take that same tiny brush. I'm going to do my main lantern shapes with white. I'm gonna be filling in each of these little shapes with white first before adding on the other colors. It's gonna give us some really nice opacity making sure that I don't have a drip. Okay, and my idea here was to kind of have some bigger lanterns in the foreground, and then for them to kind of get smaller as we go up towards the moon, and they kind of drift off towards the moon like they're flying away. So beautiful. So I'm going to start kind of at the lowest part of the sky, and I'm going to do just a little line with a curve curved line right on top and that's going to be our main shape of our lanterns okay so they actually have like a square base and then a sort of rounded top so we're going to do our best to create that shape but they're going to be all different sizes and they're going to go all different directions it's going to always be you know somewhat facing up but they're gonna point all different ways. Okay, you're just creating your beautiful little composition here. Again, some a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller, and maybe some really tiny, okay? Way in the background. Little teeny tiny ones. So cute. And then drifting up towards the moon, floating away. Very wasteful. <laughs> this is why we painted instead. It's sort of the equivalent of letting go balloons. Duh. It is littering, and I believe that this is actually now outlawed in most places to let go of these beautiful little lanterns because it's a fire hazard. So instead of doing it for real, we will paint it. But they would mostly burn up. I looked it up, and then uh, there'd be like a little tiny bit of kind of metal trash uh, traditionally. So maybe in our world, we'll just pretend that you know, they burn up completely somehow. And we release them over a large lake. <laughs> okay, so fire safe imaginary painting today. Little lanterns flying up into the sky. So pretty. Maybe a few more. Like so, once you feel that you've added enough, add a couple more. Little tiny ones. So pretty. And then we are gonna fill these in with white as well. So once you have your shapes, you can kind of do that as you go, or you can do like what I did and kind of create the little 
sketches first and then come back and fill it in. Whatever way strikes your fancy. Beautiful, just filling it in with that white, nice and opaque. And that is what's really going to make our lanterns glow. By the way, if you are painting along today, I would love to see your art. And I have created a Facebook group for my students for this very reason. Uh, so you can share your art, whether it be from painting along with me on the weekends or from your own studio and imagination. There is a link to join the art club in the description box below as well. That group is growing and I just absolutely love to see where these classes go. They are being enjoyed by individuals, by families, by retirement homes and different classes with students. It's just so fun to see. It's really a, like the highlight of my day. <laughs> so thank you all so much. If you are in the art club, shout out to you. And thank you so much for sharing your creativity with us and just making the world a more colorful and creative place. So shout out to you. Okay, just getting these all filled in with white. This is just so pretty and easy to do. You'll be amazed at how simple these lanterns are to finish. All right, getting that all filled in. Now we're going to grab a little bit of a yellow. And we're just, we're just gonna use yellow as it is. Don't need to add anything to it. And at the bottom of each of these little lanterns, we're gonna do a little curved line. And then we're gonna paint the middle part with yellow and kind of gently curve our way up to the top because what we are going to do later is then grab a little bit of orange and take the orange just at the top part of each of these lanterns and pull that down into the yellow. Now this is going to be up to you whether you want to do add a whole bunch of little yellow all over the place and then come back and then add a little orange all over the place or you can do each one at a time, or you can do a few at a time, however you'd like to do. But the idea here is about like that. I'm trying to finish one, like so. So you're gonna have a little white portion down here. It's kind of like a little bell that you're making. And then a little yellow portion. And then the top part of your bell is going to be orange. I'm gonna try to do that on another big one so that you guys can see. So. I'm doing a curved brush stroke there at the bottom. And then pulling the yellow up about halfway. I think I'm gonna do it where I do a couple at a time, even these tiny ones. You definitely wanna have a little bit of white still at the bottom. Don't wanna cover it all. And each little one here you're just lighting up the sky with these beautiful lanterns and this bright yellow color. So satisfying. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kinda do one little section at a time here. So then I'm gonna grab my orange. I'm gonna make almost like, they remind me of candy corn. <laughs> For any of my Americans watching, you know, for my international friends, candy corn is a terrible chalky candy that we eat here on Halloween, uh, which is in October. And it is a, a love or hate type of thing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Getting our beautiful little floating candy corns. <laughs> okay. And see, that's where I wanted to have that nice burnt orange so that we have a nice contrast here. And if you go too far down with your orange, you just add a little bit of yellow right back on top. 
And if you're blending a little bit too much and everything is turning just kind of a sherbet color, uh, you know, a yellow orange, you can also let it dry for a minute and then come back and add a little bit more bright yellow. So since acrylic paint does dry quickly, sometimes it's a race against the clock, but more times than not, it's about working with the way that the paint works and letting things dry and adding layers in between. Okay, a little bit of yellow. If your colors blend too much too, keep in mind that you can rinse your brush if you need at any point as well. Sometimes a wet brush is a handy blending tool to sort of soften things as well. Don't be afraid to get more paint if you need it too. A word of advice that I got early on in my painting career from an art teacher was make sure that you're applying the right color. And obviously that sounds like duh, but I think a lot of times, especially with beginning students, and I'm really bad about this too, when I'm like cooking and stuff, like I'll just add however much ingredient that I have rather than adding the right amount. So add the right amount, you know, of orange for instance. And if it really feels like it's too much orange, listen to your instincts and be like, oh, I need to add some more yellow, you know, like rather than trying to be quick about it. I think it's the rushing uh, that really gets us. So being patient and just making sure that we are applying the correct colors in the correct places and we are not worried about time okay it is the weekend <laughs> little bit of orange of course you may not be watching this on the weekend that's true but hopefully you have a moment to slow down and enjoy the process okay lovely little floating candy corns up into the sky and we're going to take a little bit of black to these in just a minute too and that's going to kind of finish everything off and make them look a little bit more like lanterns being very gentle here look at how pretty the that effect is from the white to the yellow to the orange that's why i really liked this painting and wanted to share it with everyone today so cute I can't wait to see everyone's versions of this painting in the art club. Like so, just pulling that orange down. Make sure that you get every single one with both of the orange and the yellow, and then that you have a little bit of white showing too. And that's gonna get that beautiful lantern look. A little bit, you're not gonna have much space to blend these teeny tiny ones. That's okay. You're just getting the colors on. That's really what's important. As things kind of drift off into the background, they lose their definition. That's normal. And fine. Okay, did I get everybody? Looks pretty cute. And now a little bit of black. You can start from the top down or wherever you'd like here, but I'm gonna show a big one here. With what we're gonna do so making sure I don't have any water droplets <laughs> and you're just going to outline the little curve brush stroke that you made here and in the back here as well outline it and then adding a little X is the kind of lantern part here at the bottom in the same way that you might lose some definition you might not have room for the X in these back ones. So it might just be a few little brush strokes to just sort of give the suggestion of that shape. And if you covered the white like I just did, you can always add a tiny bit more white right back in there if you want. Oop. Like so, so cute. So kind of like little bells is what they remind me of. Very pretty. So you're gonna have a lot more definition on these bigger ones. 
And for the bigger ones, you also want to try to do your best to make a nice clean outline. But then, yeah, as they disappear into the background, they can sort of lose a lot of their definition as well, and that's okay. Just going around each area patiently. Every single one, even the teeny tiny ones up here. Trying to keep all my colors intact. So cute. You might not have the X in some of these. X is the little part that holds the flame. Little wooden X. Okay. And once these all get filled in and look consistent, I think it has a really nice look. So cute. Very pretty festival of light. It's mostly hanging lanterns and light nowadays in 2020 for Chinese New Year in China. So unfortunately, I don't think there's places that have these beautiful lanterns anymore. So we're going back in time today with our imagination. There we go, almost finished. Beautiful fire in the sky. Making sure each little area, again, some might have X's, little bells. Okay, really important, I think, today to use a really small detail brush. So cute. Home stretch. Okay, last couple here. Very cute. Okay, just making sure that nice contrast oh, one more right back there okay i think i got them all they look pretty cute let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below i would love to see you over in the art club and that is all the instruction that i have for everyone today so until next time stay creative